This is a repaint video, going to show you roughly how I got from start to finish, and share some tips and thoughts that hopefully will be helpful. So first I've made two new layers, one for the new line work, and one filled in with a light solid color and the opacity turned down. This way you can see your underlying image, but it's light enough so you'll be able to see your new line work. This is very useful for refining sketches and reworking paintings. This frog photo was my reference for his face. I'm only using one reference image because I didn't want to do too much clicking back and forth interrupting the video and giving everyone seizures. But it's good for all artists to use a lot of reference material. As you paint from reference, you're strengthening your mental library, especially for things you paint over and over again. It's not cheating to use reference images. You want your paintings to be your own, so don't recreate things too closely to your reference images. Reference material is just for guidance, so you can draw things correctly. As far as painting duplicates of things, that's useful as well, but those should just be for your own personal studies. Taking him into the Liquify tool, the Liquify tool is very useful. It's useful even after something is completely rendered. If something doesn't look right, don't waste time completely repainting it if you don't have to. Just further refining the sketch and seeing if I can come up with some little armor designs I like. It's good to spend a lot more time conceptualizing, but I was just trying to get on with it. Using the lasso tool, I'm selecting the character to cut out so I can work on him easier using clipping masks. Holding the shift key, you can select more than one spot with the lasso tool, and you can also click the alt option key to deselect with the lasso tool. Now I'm trying to make the blocks of value a little more solid. I'm just removing any prominent sketch marks. Uh, an easy way to shade is to make a new layer and set the layer mode to multiply. I darkened the background so I could see the subtle value differences in the frog. Here's an extreme example of what was happening and why I darkened it. With this white background and dark character, it's very difficult to see the subtle differences in value on the character. Images on monitors are produced by light, so a dark character with a bright background is a legitimate silhouette with actual light. I'm pretty happy with where the values are at at this point, so I start moving into color. People have different preferences for when they like to start incorporating color. Some people start right from the beginning with color and other people like to have an image fully rendered in black and white before they continue into color. I think it's best to incorporate color whenever you feel comfortable doing so. For coloring, I usually use multiply layers, overlay layers, color layers, soft light layers. Um, those are my usual go-tos, but it really depends on what I'm doing. Rim lighting can help the forms read better, but it has to be somewhat believable and follow the forms kind of well. It's definitely a good thing to practice either way, whether you plan on using it or not. It does feel a little bit gimmicky but it's just an easy way to help something's shape feel a little bit more believable. You'll notice here that I'm spinning him a lot. You can hold the X key and rotate the canvas by circling around on your tablet or clickling, clickling with your mouse and circling around. Whether you're new to illustrating or if you've been doing it for a while, I think it's good to have a set workflow, meaning you have steps that you follow for your process. Doing this is very helpful because you can make notes, get into a routine, 
and improve yourself because you have a tangible system you're working by, rather than just winging it every time. Doing this will also help give you consistency in your work, which is important for doing this as a job. When I first started illustrating, I was taking tons of notes from other artists and literally writing out workflows that I thought would be effective. Your workflow will evolve as you learn, and you can keep adding to it. You'll notice as I work, I stay pretty well zoomed out. Working while zoomed out will help you maintain consistency over the entire piece. It will also help to keep you viewing it as others will see it. People rarely zoom into artwork. Also, I want to mention something I've done and seen other artists do. I think no matter what you're doing, you should use the largest brush that fits the job, or at least be conscious of your brush size. For example, if you ever find yourself doing 100 million brush strokes on a small part of the image, see that you're doing it. Recognize it and blow your brush size up. Save yourself some time. And if it's a style preference, if you're able, I would just recommend downloading a brush that does multiple lines in one stroke. I've noticed that even the sharpest brushes available don't give a painting the highest amount of sharpness. Usually you would sharpen up focal areas, typically the face of a character or wherever you want the viewer to look. If you're having trouble making an image sharp, try blowing the image size up. 